Hey, last night, um, I was like, I was reading this article from Spirit Science. I think it's thespiritscience.net about people that have experienced like other dimensions. And the article's kind of straight up like, there's no science backing up extra dimensional travel, but there's a lot of anecdotal evidence of it and stories of it. So like one guy was, was, uh, went to another dimension, like hit his head. And when he woke up, he had a tape. He was told like the Beatles never broke up in this dimension. And he was given a tape of the Beatles music that they'd still been recording. It's like the Beatles never broke up dot com. But like the the first song just rips off Ma a band on the run by Paul McCartney, so it's obviously fake. Anyway, so the articles I just assume the whole article is just kind of like nonsense at that point. But it does make a good point that everything is vibration. So what I what I've recently been been learning is that there's a theory that I think even maybe Stephen Hawking came up with this theory that although light cannot penetrate a black hole because of its I don't know. It's insane amount of density. I don't know. I wouldn't call it infinitely dense, but it's massive density. Light can't pen it doesn't travel through it. But apparently, because it's so dense, sound is speeds up when it goes through it because it's so compact. The sound accelerates, and there's this belief that maybe that the the whole the vibration of the universe that's causing matter to coalesce as we know it, or it's causing electrons to spin or fermions to spin which then causes electrons to form or protons to form um, I think is actually caused by sound and you know the power of the voice the human voice the, the reason why video is so much different than than text uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a large ways is because of voice obviously you know imagery too that's a vibration a heightened sense of vibration but the voice like I, one time I was at the ocean just like what does it all mean what does it mean I was screaming at the ocean like what does it fucking mean and and I realized all of all of it really like what's the point of all this the point is that your voice can be heard over the sound of the crashing ocean so like really all that it comes down to is can you survive and what's one of our greatest survival tools is our voice. Not only does it help us stay connected with our surroundings and other people, which can lead to an immediate sense of survival, but it, it can, well, in, in that it connects us to our surroundings and other people. I mean, you can scream and avoid a collision or, or a, you know, you can scream and immediately change the situation for a lot of people. And if your voice is drowned out because it's too weak, because you haven't worked out your lungs, or just because it's, it's untrained or whatever, because you're afraid, because it's too weak, uh, I think that that's maybe that's that's the failure of life. If you can't if you can't make your voice be heard, then there's a problem. You have to be able to be heard. And this is maybe this is for me. Maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. You know, some people are mute; they don't even talk at all. Some people draw the most phenomenal pictures. But me, uh, it's, I've always been connected to my voice. Um, I, I do like analytics and working on numbers on paper, like writing stuff down and thinking about it and then figuring it out. But being able to relay that information or ask for more of that information is, is much more enjoyable to me. It always has been. And I've had experienced much more success in life uh, as an actor or a musician which is really a kind of acting, than, than a writer. Um, the, the vibration of the voice, you know. So I read this thing about how everything's a vibration, and it started making me think, like, yeah, maybe not everything's alive. You know, I used to, I had this conversation once a long time ago where I, I was saying that, like, yeah, there's, stuffed animals have personality, and, you know, later... I started to think, well, maybe they, they don't, but then like, how do you define personality? And it's not that they have personality. It's not that this, that this cup of water has a personality, you know, that, that word personality kind of means like person, like, which isn't, isn't like, doesn't mean it has to be a human. Like Johnny's got a, is kind of a person, 
Sort of. I mean, in some, some like India, I think, is actually legally giving personhood to like elephants because they're so intelligent. So personality is not the right word, but intelligence maybe. And even if you want to say this glass of water has intelligence, maybe that's a little far-fetched because of what we think of as intelligence, being able to calculate numerics and relay the information. So maybe the right word is consciousness. That the vibration that's causing this water to coalesce and this glass to coalesce, this formulated, localized consciousness. And like, so I'm thinking like, okay, then there's this metal, like this, uh, this metal heater is metal. And I'm like looking around my whole, that's pretty cool, right? I'm looking around my whole apartment at all the things and, and realizing that they're all vibrating and they're all conscious in that sense that there's this, oh man, I'm not sure if intelligent is the right word, but there's this like functional vibration that is affecting everything and I could feel it. I, it was like this resettling feeling of just like. And I'm kind of feeling it now. Yeah, everything's definitely humming. And it's interesting how matter is like localized. Like it's not just this swamp of amalgamous chaos. You know, it's not just like a bit of plastic oxygen, it's not like a little bit of hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen everywhere. They're, they're like This has more carbon in it than this air, I think. And like, so if I cut off a piece of this, it, it's still like the chunk of matter like like moves. The vibration doesn't like just dissipate the, the matter. It's so, it's so interesting how stuff coalesces and like sticks together. There's this like stickiness um, I guess you, maybe that's electromagnetism. Well, I guess what's causing like hydrogen to form is not magnetism. Hydrogen is forming because of like a nuclear force. Uh, but is that a kind of magnetism? Like the electrons are forming and then causing the protons to, to stick to it? At this point, I'm a little outside my comfort zone. It's so important to keep in mind, man, that everything is a lie. Well, it's not everything's a lie. See, there I go again with my, uh, with my, not onomatopoeia. What the fuck is that when you project human, uh, behavior onto inanimate objects? There's a word for that. Um, I do that a lot because I, I enjoy the metaphor. I like creating stories, you know, fantasy and, and ideas that a stuffed animal comes to life and is the main character in a, in a book. I love that stuff. Or that a window is talking to the, the cat outside. They're having a conversation, actually. And I've done enough psychedelic drugs to, like, see it. Like I mean, I've always kind of thought it was a funny thing to imagine, but then once you really can see it and, like, dream it in real time then it becomes even more enjoyable to, to fixate on. But it's important to remember that everything is connected with this vibration, and that goes beyond the, the wood and the walls, but to other people. And uh, I'm so stuck on this fear that people seem to be experiencing with ISIS. Like, it's driving me nuts. Driving me absolutely fucking stagnant. Because they're just people suffering and they're pushed to the limit where they have no other, like, Iraq's been bombed out, basically. They're, they're like, living in this post-apocalyptic chaos right now and they're trying to, like, reestablish some form of sanity. So it's like, I, I made this metaphor before, if a foreign country invaded, like, Central America and was there for 20 years, eventually the American people would form, if the American government wouldn't do something about it and there was just this militia, just like the U.S. has been ripping apart the Middle East, but no governments have stepped in because nobody wants a world war. So eventually this militia, just this civilian militia, just takes up arms. It's like, we're going to stop it. If you're not going to stop it, we're going to stop it. And it's like this violent, bloody, we're getting the, the American media is telling us one thing. Um, 
war is not pleasant. Yeah, there's beheadings going on, but there's also fucking drone bombs going on from our end. And, like, how often do you see... I don't watch a lot of CNN or ABC. I try to avoid it for the most part when it comes to news because it's just this corporation dictating what they want to tell you. It's not like they're bound by any kind of rules. And except the rules that they themselves create or they pay the FCC to, to, to make for them or like what they're satisfied with, what rules they're satisfied with at the moment. So it's not a pleasant experience on either end, but it doesn't have to be that way. It can be peaceful. We can coexist with these people. If they have enough to eat and drink and houses to live in and we're communicating with art, you know, we're passing music and technology amongst each other, the religion's inane. It doesn't matter. All of us want peace. Muhammad and Jesus both understood that everyone is connected. And we're all in this together. And there is no them. It's us. We are us. This is one unit that is trying to survive as best we can with what communication tools we have. Now that we have internet video, why does Barack Obama not get on internet video with the head of ISIS? Do you have an answer to that? I didn't immediately have an answer to that question. It's more of like a, a rhetorical, like, hey, Barack Obama, get on video, internet video with the head of ISIS and broadcast it real time to the world. Stop being a fucking pussy. And no offense to the women. It's not a, a female. I mean, it is a, a word for, and no offense, Johnny. You know, love the cat, love the cat. But if, if I do this, he gets freaked out. So don't be like that. If you hear a knock at your door, don't, 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 the adrenaline shouldn't shoot up your stomach. We're all friends. And we have to use the tools available to us. If we don't use the tools available to us, that's it, man. We didn't do it. So we have to do it. We did it. Together. I'm, I'm tempted to go on a semantic binge right now and just talk about how there's no black and there's no white. They say life is not black and white. This looks black, but it's not black. I can still see it. Black is the absence of light. People aren't black and white. It's a stupid fucking label to, to try and throw at someone. I'm not white. White is like, reflects every color. This is like a pink... Like a like a like an orangish beige, you know. So this this whole black and white mentality is like fucking ridiculous. We gotta move past this Stone Age stupid shit. You know, even talking about nationality is ridiculous because there's no such thing as a border. I can walk across the world if I can get across the the strait up in uh, uh, with with the Australian-Russian border. I mean, literally, I could I could just walk. There's no borders. Borders are like nationalities. So I'm into globalization in this sense. You hear a lot of... I, I, get, I experience a lot of fear about people being afraid of the New World Order, uh, a global government dictating global policy, and, and maybe, maybe they'll make dissent more difficult. And dissent is part of what makes us diverse and, and strong as a culture. Well, if you want to call what we're experiencing right now with the conflicts strong culture, that's that's almost like we need a sense of global community. I don't think we need a global bank, but we need to be connected as a unit, whether we're on Earth or Mars or... Alpha Centauri, we should be able to connect to interface real time. And nationality is a fucking archaic problem. I, I think I just reused that word archaic, but good God, nationality is old school. I'm an American. I'm, I'm Amerigo Vespucci doesn't deserve that. He was just some Italian dude that that, that stamped his name on this fucking island. I'm a human. I'm an animal. Right now I'm on this planet, but at some point we'll, we'll see that that's not even a border, that it doesn't matter where you physically are, you're still connected with everything else.
in that sense, I'm, I'm an advocate of globalization, huge advocate of globalization. And I don't think that conquest is the way to do it. I find that cultural unification is by far the most enjoyable, safe, prosperous way to formulate a sense of severity or, or service or whatever you want to call it amongst uh, the people that our greater purpose is to unite our thoughts, not, not, I don't know, man. It, I can tell that what I'm saying is a little crazy. I mean, it doesn't, it's not exactly like what needs to be said, you know? But I'm just doing what I can right here. Culture and diplomacy is the ticket, man. Being together, unifying people, what we are is one unit. Be that way. Do it. Sense it. Feel it. You are the universe. Whether or not you want to admit it, you're the universe. All the vibration in you is a reflection and is feeding back information into this consciousness, which is then feeding it back into you. So everything you do is directly affecting everything that we understand. Cease the bombing campaign so that we can know ourselves. Please, please, do you love, do you hate, do you feel, do you want to be? Yeah, the worst thing I can do is make a, a video and put it, well, it's not the worst thing I can do, but the mark of an unsuccessful online video is when I end feeling uncomfortable with what I'm talking about like in a way it's too serious of a topic to be flippant and like I'm talking just to hear myself talk right now like I didn't say enough so I gotta say more but I don't really know what I'm gonna say so I'm just like talking about illustration I'm just like slapping colors on a page and, and what's gonna happen like ISIS and the conflict in the Middle East is a result of the United States propping up dictators in the Middle East. That is the fucking... Well, chaos is a result of a lack of resources. I think conflict in the beginning started over, like, who all wanted to drink the water. There wasn't enough for everybody. Or if, if there were too many people shitting in the water, then it makes it poison for everybody, so you gotta like keep some people out. It's just like, that's what it's always been about, is resources. When you have enough, you don't go out searching for more, really. Okay, resources. So, we provide resources with our advanced technologies, I think. Um, other than that, like I think about the Crusades and what was the cause of the Crusades in the early 11th century or whenever they, the 12th century I think, or whenever they started. The, the Europeans, <sighs> so crazy man, it's like a lack of language, they didn't speak the same language. They had a, a common belief that I wish I had an answer, but I know one thing. Islam and Christianity are saying the same fucking thing. There's one God. And what that means is that there's this energy field of vibration that's permeating everything. And it's causing everything to understand a certain way. So God is... the vibrational field. And at light speed, we're transferring information into the field, and the field is transferring information back to us. And it's this refractive feedback loop, I guess. And it's refractive because what you're sending is altering what's coming in, and what's coming in is altering what you're sending. And it's just constantly like that. And that's God. That's why prayer works. That's why when you speak, 
you're spoken to in a way, like you're speaking to yourself, but you're actually being spoken back to through yourself or through everything else. The, the curtains, the curtains hear what I'm saying. They, they, they're, they're feeling it. The vibration is affecting them, and then their vibration is changing and affecting me. So it's wonderful that we've got the science to, to explain this stuff. I'm not saying this is the answer and it's always going to be this way. Well, I'm sure we'll figure out that this information was fallible, and at one point we'll move past thinking that everything is connected through a vibration, and what even we think of as things will be thought of as a different system altogether. Like, obviously, now I understand that this thing is actually a system of vibrational elements, and we'll get to the point where that's common knowledge, and kindergartners know that. I was going to take a sip out of this. But the vibration field is what Einstein was looking for, the unified field, and Nassim Harriman calculated it, so it's basically set, which is great. If you know Nassim Harriman, watch him talk about the vibrational field, the unified field theory, which he basically completed Einstein's equations. Now that, but there's still people that are like, don't know this. And those people that were taught about religion or whatever they've got, because I mean, what else do you have to explain reality, if not science? Religion. That's like the other form of explanation. It's the older, I don't know, less educated or, or, or a different type of educational information about how things work. And you know, like the Bible stories are. It, they, they're real. It's like a historical document that was rewritten 50 times or whatever, but it's not like fantasy. I mean, some of it is like drug, it seems like it's drug-induced, you know, dudes walking on water. Yeah, I've seen that too, man, and it was on LSD. Um, actually, I haven't seen that on LSD, but I could imagine seeing that on LSD if I wanted to or some other crazy psychotropic um, or just in my dreams. But when you understand that the images of God and, and, and unification are real the whole time. Christianity, Buddhism, well, I don't know much about Buddhism. Honestly, I don't know much about any religions. I'm not a very religious person, except I guess math is my religion. Uh, physics, tends, I tend to be religious about physics because I believe it without really just at face value. One plus one equals two. I believe it. I mean, that's that's a faith, that's a religion to believe that that's true because in some mathematical systems, one plus one equals one zero. In binary, it doesn't equal two, it equals one zero. Um, but they're, they're all right. They were all right about God. Not necessarily above us. I think people were obsessed with the sky back when there was no TV and everything was dark because it was the brightest thing in the world, <laughs> in the universe at the time. When you stare into someone's eyes, it kind of looks like you're staring into a universe. But they were right about God being a thing. There is a vibrational force that's connecting us and creating things or helping things to create themselves, however you want to look at it. But I think what they're not right about religion is when they start to apply control tactics or techniques to it like um, human stuff to it. Like uh, church and things like that. Like one guy doesn't know more than the other guy. When it comes to when it comes to God, we all know whether or not you want to vo vocalize it. I'm an atheist. I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm not a theist. I don't think that there's a deity. Like saying that God is a man is a fucking misogynistic approach to reality. God is not a guy. He does not. A, it's not a he. I'm a he because I have a fucking cock and testicles. Uh, and some guy with cock and testicles said that God was a man because it's a control tactic to belittle women. God is just a fucking field of energy that's pulsing. So let's get that straight and move on.
What else has got? Is it light? Is it sound? Is it something other than that? Probably something other than that. It starts to register as sound. I don't know, man. What causes the vibration? Maybe there's this pulsing center to the universe that we're all going to find. We'll be like, oh, it actually is. a. Uh, it could be a man the size of like 9,000 galaxies. Obviously, it's not. I would be very surprised. But maybe it's like a when you look into it, you see what you are thinking. Like it could be the center of consciousness. could be like this giant globe of perception like that's that's causing uh what causes waves in the ocean gravity um what cause so what's gravity just just the force of of things revolving around each other but where why are these things even there to begin with what what uh there there must be an outside force that caused things to form but then it wouldn't be outside it would just be part of the system uh and then what what is that has it always just been there is it always just been this fluctuation probably but why would we create human brains that don't understand infinity if infinity is real that could be a joke like andy kaufman I like playing jokes. I like humor. You know, humor is fu is funny. Humor is supposed to be like, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, humor is supposed to be like one of one of a oh, human humor humor humorous human. Uh, hum. It's one of our greatest assets as humans is 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 hilarity. So maybe the idea that it's always just been there is like the joke we're playing on ourselves, and. Trying to define it is the comedy of the gods. Very likely. In fact, I have no idea if it's very likely, but that would be funny. That's all I gotta say.